It's like I've learned nothing. Actually, don't tell anybody I said this, but these are pretty good cars. Maybe not this one in particular, but in general, these E46s are pretty solid. This is a 2002 BMW 325 Xi. This is the last of the, of the good BMWs. Anyway, this one has a, well, it has a few problems, but the big one is the coolant is disappearing and the owner has replaced some of the hoses and lines and he thought he had it fixed and it's still losing coolant. So I suspect if it's not leaking out, it's leaking in. I actually owned one of these once upon a time. Not one of these, but an E46. Mine was a 2001 330CI. So it was a two-door coupe, rear-wheel drive with a five-speed manual. Yeah, it was the same silver color. It had different rims, but they were also silver. I love that car. It was fantastic. Should have kept it. Stupid global recession. Yeah, these things don't have a lot of power, but they have like perfect 50-50 weight distribution. They've got a real straight six engine, independent rear suspension, great handling. The interiors are fantastic. You know, obviously this car is getting a little older, but yeah, very comfy seats. This one has power seats. Mine had all manual seats, but Whoever designed that seat, like it was like a, a leather covered Swiss watch. There was levers and knobs and adjustments all over. Yeah, this is a wagon, which is cool in my opinion. And it's an XI, which means it's, it's all wheel drive, but those are all automatic, at least here in the, U in the US. I don't know what BMW did to the bodies of these cars, but they do not rust. I mean, this thing's 20 years old and it hasn't had a particularly easy life and I think it would still clean up pretty nice here's the problem with this car it's losing coolant and he replaced I don't know what it was some hoses somewhere along the side of the engine that are known to to fail and it didn't fix the problem he's still losing coolant when I pulled it in the upper radiator hose was popped off the radiator so I snapped that back on and I pressurized the system to 15 psi last night and it's still holding about 13 psi so it's holding pressure pretty well and you'll see some little spots on the floor but that's just for me farting around putting that hose back on it has not leaked externally at all it's leaking oil pretty bad out of the valve cover but it's not leaking coolant. So I suspect that this car may have a bad head gasket. I pulled the coils and the plugs out. We're gonna stick the scope down in here and see if we can see if we can see any problems. Well, there's nothing fancy about this. We're just gonna give it a, a colonoscopy. This is a borescope. It's called a T-slong or Teslong. I don't know how they pronounce it. Anyway, this one's kind of cool because it has the normal end camera and it also has a side camera and if I push this little button right here it will switch to the side view that's pretty handy for what we're doing so it has a recording feature hopefully it records so cylinder number one a little bit of oil around the spark plug threads nothing major so the top of the piston is a little bit wet. Nothing too concerning, I guess. Let's switch to the side view. All right, everything looks pretty dry up at the top here. Might be leaking a little bit from the valve seals. But I don't see any big problems here. Go to cylinder number two. That one looks pretty good. Go to the side view. Looks pretty good. Uh, three and four are both at the top, so we can't really see anything there. Okay, the bottom side of the head is kind of wet looking on this one. Maybe it's just that valve. 
Yeah, I guess it's not too bad. Oh, that doesn't look very good. What the heck is that? Looks like rust. Look at that. The whole side of the cylinder is all rusty. Like really badly rusty. I drove this thing in here. It was running fine. Oh, yeah, we got a little stain here on the side. Yeah, you see how wet that looks right there at the seam? And then there's a little trail that goes all the way down the cylinder wall. We could put it back together and do the uh, the test we've done before using the the fluid on top of the coolant. We'll draw some air through it, you know, pull a vacuum on it and see if the combustion gases are making their way into the coolant. If the coolant's making its way into the cylinder, then surely the path should be open the other way. I want to do a compression test on that number six cylinder. The rust has me scared. Battery shot. So hook up the jump pack. By the way, if you're looking for a good jump pack, this is a Jump and Carry JNC 660. I have no idea if it's any good, but so far it's better than my Schumacher that only lasted, I don't know, three months, four months. It's a pile of junk. That's not terrible. I mean, it should run on that. Let's see what a, what a good cylinder is. Always make sure you have these ground cables on. BMW coils. Bad things can happen if you forget those. Still looks pretty blue to me. Does anybody else feel like they never get anything done? If I work 12 hours a day, six days a week, I get about four hours of actual work done. The BMW 325XI, it's still here. It's been, I don't even know how long, way too long. I haven't made any progress with it. I have no idea what's wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think it has a coolant leak. I don't think it has a bad head gasket. I think it's fine. So we're going to pick it up. We're going to drop the oil out, see if there's any coolant in the oil pan. I don't think we're going to find any. If we don't find it there, then I think we'll just put a, we'll put a valve cover gasket on it. We'll try to bleed the brakes and we're going to send it home. Yeah, it's just rotten in the parking lot. It might as well go home and, and rot in his driveway. Anybody want some acorns? So if there's coolant that's been leaking into the oil pan, it should collect on the bottom since it's heavier than the oil. And we should see it as soon as we pop the plug here. I'm not seeing anything yet. Nope, that's just oil. Okay, well, I guess we're good to go. Yeah, the brakes are still pretty spongy, so I'm just re-bleeding them. Amazingly, the bleeders came loose in both rear calipers. I did have to replace the left side, but got the old one out, no problem. But well, you won't believe this, I lost another 10 millimeter quarter inch drive shallow socket. That one comes up missing more than any other in the shop. That's why I keep an extra 
at least an extra one in stock. Sometimes I keep two in stock. And we have to remember there's a ground strap in the front and the back. That is not a 10. You know what? Somebody's been here before. So I found that guy laying down in the, the skid plate. I think we've got some further evidence that somebody's been here before. Pretty sure the factory wouldn't have used this bright red silicone. And then they did the corners where the cams are, but normally you also do the seam, you know, the where the timing cover bolts to the cylinder head. There's always a little gap there. You put a little RTV on and somebody somebody forgot to do that which doesn't seem like a very German thing to do. So I would guess somebody's done this job before. Uh, but the other thing I'm noticing is this does not look like the, the valve cover of an engine that's been, that's been sucking coolant through the head gasket. It doesn't have that milky look. It's just, just oil, a little bit of carbon. Okay, we got the new blue from you know who. Velpro, of course. Doesn't fit the best. Maybe if we let it sit for a bit, it'll kind of find a happy place. I have to put some grease in those, keep them from popping out, or maybe we can put a little bit of super glue on them. That should work. Silicone time. And yeah, we use the black stuff here. Sure, there's some specific BMW part number that we're supposed to use, but. Can we get away with this? I haven't checked service data, but I've never seen a, a valve cover gasket install that didn't require a little bit of silicone right here where the, the timing cover bolts up. I don't, I don't think it was leaking there. Pretty sure it was leaking right here. Anyway, doesn't matter. Pretty sure you guys have seen the rest of this process once before. So. I'll bring it back when it's done. That's it for the valve cover gasket. Pretty simple job. I don't have an explanation for this nut that I found. There were none missing. So Either it's from some other part of the engine, or when they lost it, they replaced it. Doesn't matter, I guess. Anyway, I've got to replace the hood latch real quick. I don't know why he wants to replace it. This zip tie is both stylish and effective.
can't break the kidney grill, people won't know it's a BMW. <laughs> okay, I think the front end of this car has been repainted at some point. That's it for the Beamer. I'm gonna send it home. You know, I, I can't fix it if it's not broken and we just didn't find any problems. You know, I'm sure it's losing coolant, but we didn't find a leak and it doesn't appear to have a bad head gasket. Now it's possible that it still does have a bad head gasket. We just didn't see it. It's very difficult to diagnose a bad head gasket or a cracked block or a cracked head. I'm working on another video right now where you guys will see even with all the right test equipment, it's very difficult to make the call. And honestly, if it does have a bad head gasket or a cracked head or something, it's probably not worth fixing it. So at least it stops and it doesn't leak a whole lot of oil. So we can drive it for a while and, and see how it does. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. Max, there are mice literally crawling everywhere. What are you doing, pup? There he is, right there. <laughs>